I deeply deplore any inconveniencialities that I may have caused you, Mr. Greenface. It wasn't unheard of for popular Dr. Seuss characters to get a follow-up story, even beyond the Grinch example covered earlier. The Cat in the Hat, becoming the big breakout hit in his catalog, was featured in a number of spin-off books and even a direct sequel with The Cat in the Hat Comes Back. But a crossover between two characters was definitely more out of the ordinary for him. And keep in mind, this was long before he had the likes of the MCU and Smash Bros, which practically redefined crossovers as we know them. However, considering how polar opposite these two characters were, the Grinch Grinches the Cat in the Hat actually did show a lot of potential on the surface. And while I can't say it fully lived up to what could have been, I think it delivers fairly well. The story in a nutshell is, the Grinch is a meanie because his mirror tells him so, just go with it, and the cat is chipper and happy-go-lucky. So when they cross paths and the cat ends up being a bit of a racist, Green face? The Grinch makes the cat's life a living hell with various tricks and contraptions of his. So the cat takes it upon himself to find the root of his vices. Despite the grim fact that he's depraved and deranged, I will find that soft spot. That Grinch can be changed. I think the biggest problem with the story here is that it, for the most part, just kind of meanders its way through until it's time to get to the resolution. The tricks the Grinch pulls are amusing, but I feel like the story would have benefited from having the faster pace and a few more set pieces to fill in the gaps. While nowhere near as bad about this as Puntoffel, as his wordplay is actually on full display here and it's consistently fun to listen to, of complexitous complication in this world of peculiar puzzleization. Sue still feels like he's phoning it in a little here, as there's a distinct lack of actual development for much of the runtime. Even the Grinch feels weird compared to his other appearances. I get the impression this is meant to be a sort of alternate take on the character, as Whoville and Mount Crumpet are nowhere to be seen, and it's implied he does all this as part of some sort of clan? I am a Grinch. I'm a Grinch! It does take away from the novelty a bit, but I guess this kind of change needed to be made for the two to conceivably meet. Admittedly, his aura here feels less threatening and more playground teasing, especially of how short he looks when standing alongside the cat, but there's still clear malice at play with how he just won't leave the cat alone for what was really a minor inconvenience. And his inventions like the sound switcher and the dark ray are very in character for him. Let's talk a little about the voice acting here too. So, both are Lee's previous voice actors, Alan Sherman as the cat and Hans Conried as the Grinch, had both sadly passed by this time. Thus, they had to be replaced by Mason Adams and Bob Holt, respectively. It's a little off-putting at first, especially in the Grinch's case, since it's basically an imitation of an imitation. And that brings about the most horrible things. But they both do what they can to make the most of their roles and manage to have their moments. So it's not a huge loss. If you will be so kind as to hold my hot dog, that's a good fella. Even the art and animation, while clearly standard budget for the time and rather plain looking at first glance, manages to feel much more like the Doctor's world than the previous couple specials from the environments alone. And it helps that there's a couple sequences where they get especially creative with the colors and direction. They really did give it their all despite their limits. However, you then realize that half of what makes Zeus' stories hold up so well, the moral value, is bizarrely lacking here. For most of the special, you're kind of led to believe that this is meant to be little more than wacky antics, which itself does feel a little off. But then, you get this number about the cat asking the Grinch to look back at his memories of his mother and to always have her in his heart. Wherever she's now, her eyes are still looking, looking down at you. And wondering what's cooking. And apparently that's enough for him to stand up to his mirror guy. As far as this story goes, it doesn't come out of nowhere. They rather cleverly foreshadow this, in fact. Or maybe your mother didn't Ma treat Mama? you right. But again, can you imagine the Grinch in the Christmas or even the Halloween specials being like this? Probably not. And it feels so tacked on, too. 
Now be a good boy and clean up your room. Yes, mama. But overall, it's really not a bad watch. It's not a particularly strong or memorable work, but anyone who has any interest in seeing these icons work off each other will find something to enjoy here. Don't go in expecting something on the level of the Christmas classic, and you'll be fine. <laughs>